today we're starting um, not our last topic, but it's a pretty fun topic. If you haven't copied Unit 16 over, do so quickly. Um, today's homework, the ones, and it's pretty straightforward. Hopefully a lot of this isn't new to you or it actually should be reviewed. But the one thing that I want to talk about with nuclear reactions versus chemical reactions is that a nuclear reaction is not like a chemical reaction. In a nuclear reaction, the nucleus changes. The atom changes. In a chemical reaction, the nucleus stays the same. The only thing that changes is valence electron or electrons come and go. So, and also the amount of energy that's associated with a nuclear reaction versus a regular reaction, totally different. So, nuclear reactions have a lot of um, energy that's given off there. So, a few things that this section will try to answer here. That over. Um, how, does there, how does radiation exposure to these sources compare with exposures to other sources that occur naturally? So, I know that some of you are thinking about becoming a nuclear chemist or a nuclear engineer. I know there's a lot of money associated with that, but be careful because you may not live very long uh, if you're not very careful. Yeah, so... Just saying, uh, there with if you're exposed to different types of chemical reactions, it won't kill you as quickly as say nuclear reactions. But again, we'll talk about that later on. Um, some of number two it says some of these procedures generate hazardous radioactive waste. How can this hazardous material be stored safely? You can't. All right, number three. <laughs> How can you assess the risks of using nuclear reactions and weigh these risks against potential benefits? So some of you may have the doctor that likes to take a lot of x-rays. Okay, Yeah, I would question, especially if you haven't had any additional injuries or other significant injuries, say, you know, probably two angles of this would be enough. You don't need to have four or five or six x-rays of the same thing taken place because again when you have exposure to x-rays uh, it can cause some genetic mutations so and that is cancer so we'll talk about that a little bit later on as well. all right the nucleus and radiation when we talk about what is actually happening in a reaction we'll talk about the actual mechanisms in more detail tomorrow about what happens when an atom's bombarded when it releases particles from the nucleus those will be the, the technicalities that we'll talk about tomorrow. But do realize that there are subatomic particles that are involved with the reactions. And again, things are coming into the nucleus, things are leaving the nucleus. Um, it can be a proton, neutron, electron. An electron can enter the nucleus and will change the structure of the nucleus itself. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. So remember the two subatomic particles that reside within the nucleus, proton and neutron and electrons are on the outside. Also, we will be talking a lot about isotopes. And again, isotopes are, you have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. So the mass will be different for these isotopes. Okay. Do they have similar characteristics? Yeah, they have similar characteristics, uh, but they don't have identical characteristics. Okay. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Um, keeping in mind that if you see neon 20, neon 21, neon 22, what do those numbers on the back end represent again? The mass. It's the mass number. Because again, the number of protons identifies what you're looking at. And if you look on your periodic table, and I did put a periodic table on here for you guys. Again, what a nice guy. So if you look on your periodic table, neon has a more mass of or number of protons? 10. Okay, so if you forget that, that's fine. Or if you need to look at the periodic table, that's fine. But the numbers on the back end are the mass. And again, what contributes mass? Protons and neutrons. So if each of these neutrons have 10 protons, then how many neutrons does neon 20 have? How many neutrons? 11 and 12. Okay, so that's part of your homework for tonight. I know it's going to be extremely difficult. Um, also, in contrast, we already know that the atom's chemical properties are unaffected by the number of neutrons in the nucleus. So again, 
if you're looking at 2021, 22, it still behaves in the same way. Uh, again, it's melting point and freezing point might change a little bit, but the way it behaves is the same. Uh, let's see, reactions that uh, the nucleus undergoes. So there's different types of reactions that will take place. And we'll talk more about these in greater detail tomorrow. There's what's called alpha decay, alpha capture, electron decay, electron capture, et cetera, et cetera. And what's happening is that these particles are actually being captured or emitted or ejected from the nucleus. Now, again, there's different types of radiation that takes place. And again, with light, we only have a very small spectrum that we can actually see, but radio waves all the way through gamma rays are a form of light. Now, some of this light is nastier than others. Luckily, we don't have gamma rays here on Earth, unless you're the Hulk. But the thing is, uh, we do have x-rays, which is the second worst, so to speak. So we'll talk about the types of radiation when we're looking at these types of reactions. And again, radioactivity deals with how these things actually occur. In other words, when the reaction takes place. Um, when we, and here's what we're going to be doing today, and we'll be doing this for the next couple of days. Here's a typical reaction, and this by definition is called helium or alpha decay or emission. And what's happening is we have an alpha particle or a helium atom, and again, it doesn't have a charge on there, but technically it has a mass of four and two protons. And what's happening is it is changing what we're starting with, uranium 290 or 238. And what happens is that alpha particle is ejected out of the nucleus, and what remains is that we only have the thorium-90. So mechanically, what's happening? We have how many protons here in uranium? 92. If two of those protons leave, how many remain? 90. And again, the number of protons identifies what we're looking at. So if this guy takes off and goes somewhere, we don't care where or um, the only thing that remains is this. And if it's not one of your 52, I'm not so worried about you knowing it. But does anybody know what TH is? Thorium. Very good. Okay. Okay. So thorium, um, and actually this is called thorium-234 because it has a mass of 234. Now, here's the really cool part. When doing these types of reactions, treat the arrow like an equal sign. So if I have 92 protons on the left side, I better have 92 protons on the right side. If I have 238 as my mass, I better have 238 when I add those up. So tomorrow when we actually start doing these types of reactions, you're going to have to determine what one of these happens to be. Today I'm going to give it to you just so you get practice on balancing those out. Pretty easy. All right, and so that's what this is saying down here. Make sure you can add up those masses and whatnot. Scroll. I don't know. Okay, transmutations. When we talk about transmutations, these are just reactions, whether something's being captured by the nucleus or struck by the nucleus, or if it's being ejected out of the nucleus. So mutation, that tells you that something's changing. When we're looking at some of these subatomic particles, I'll give you a couple of them. Here is a neutron. In other words, it has a mass of one, but this bottom number, what do these bottom numbers represent again? Protons. Good. So a neutron obviously does not have a proton in it. Okay. And so when we look at, say, proton, I like to write it, when I'm writing it out, I'll write it like this. It's a hydrogen atom with a, ma I'm sorry, a mass of one and one proton. Or you can write it as a lowercase p. I'm not going to write it as a p because when I write, you might say to yourself, why in the heck is he drawing phosphorus up there? But this right here is a little easier to understand. Hydrogen with no neutrons, it's just a proton if there's no electrons on there. Now, we don't include charges on these, but technically this is with a plus one charge because there's no electron on there. Okay? So, here we go. Um, and again, so here's an example where a neutron is captured by a chlorine 35 atom, and as that happens, a proton is ejected from the nucleus. Now, I'd have to tell you that that was happening. There's no way that you're going to be able to look at that reaction and go, hmm, there's a proton that's ejected whenever a neutron's captured. 
It depends on the situation. But if I tell you that a proton's been ejected from the nucleus, hopefully you're going to be able to write this out and be able to write down the correct values for that. And keep in mind that the numbers need to add up to the same on both sides there. Ready for some practice problems? These are, these are brutal. All right, so number one, uh, indicate the number of protons and neutrons for each of the following nuclei. And here's what I'd suggest. I would write out the symbol, so to speak, when doing this. So chlorine, again, is Cl. Hopefully you haven't forgotten those 52. But if it's not one of your 52, I will give it to you. Okay? And typically, we'll be working with the bottom two rows. So when we look at the bottom two rows on the periodic table, Okay, these guys, again, anything after, and I don't think I've said it to you guys, anything after uranium, number 92, is all synthetic or man-made. So this is our last naturally occurring element. Everybody else is man-made. I don't know why we get our rocks off on making those, but that's the deal. So, all right, so when looking at them, if it's not one of your 52, I'd give you the symbol for that. So let's look at it. Um, the 37 again means what? The mass, very good. So where would we put the mass on this? The top or the bottom? Top, good. And the bottom number represents protons. And how many protons does chlorine have? 17. And if you're not sure, you can always go to the periodic table and find that information. Get this a little faster. So chlorine, right here, number 17. All right, so there is our, there are numbers. So how many protons does chlorine have? 17, good. And how many neutrons do we have here? How do you find neutrons? Yeah, so again, remember this is protons plus neutrons, and this is protons. So take the difference of those two. So proton, or neutrons is 20. That is it for that one. I know. And you'll see challenging questions like this on the test, I promise. Iridium, I don't believe, is one of your 52. Okay, but. Uh, all right, so 200 and iridium is where in the middle here. So 77. So how many protons? 77. And neutrons? 123, very good. Mental math, love it. And then uranium 238. That would be you. <laughs> Not one of your 52, so I understand. And uranium has 92 protons. So how many protons? 92. And neutrons? 46. Issues about that? Careful, don't hurt yourself. All right, well, no, no, we still have some more practice. Oh, yeah. So let's look at practice problem number four. All right, number four says, write a bounced nuclear equation for the nuclear transmutation of which cobalt, 60, yeah. The nucleus is struck by a helium-4 nucleus. Producing, what does producing mean? Beginning. Arrow, very good. Copper-63 nucleus and a neutron. Okay. So cobalt, symbol is CO, and it has a mass of 60. And cobalt. So cobalt, right here, number 27. What did I say, 27? Okay. And it's struck by a helium-4 nuclei, producing copper, 63, and copper's number is what, 29? Thank you. And what else? And a neutron. And a neutron 
symbol is lowercase n, has a mass of 1. How many protons is in a neutron? Zero. Okay. So again, double check, make sure the numbers add up. 27 plus 2 equals 29 plus 0. Love it. And then 60 plus 4 equals 63 plus 1. Good. So again, tomorrow I would be asking for you to, to determine one of these. Oh man. Try the last one on your own. Number five, I believe. <laughs> Good old Maraconian. Good old Maracon. So, if, it's, if it's not one of your 52, I'll give you the symbol. Most of the time. Uh, did I not give that to you? P-U. Sorry about that. Next to AM. You know, see, I'll remember that. It should be 95, right? Oh, there you go. What'd you write? 1344 How'd you write? How did you represent your proton? What's that? So you did this? Yeah? Oh, I'll accept that too. So when representing proton, you can either represent it with a lowercase p. Again, I'm not going to write the p because I don't want anybody thinking that's phosphorus. So the hydrogen atom with no neutron, these both represent a proton. Yeah. So either one of those is fine. Okay. And then make sure that your numbers add up. So hopefully 95 plus 1 equals 94 plus 2. Yeah. And then 245 plus 1 equals 242 plus 4. Yep. When I, I drew those two circles down there when I was doing this, looking at my periodic table. I did, but not for you, mainly for me. You're welcome. All right, so the homework, the ones. Isn't this fun? All right. Have a good one.